All right, so thanks everybody for joining us today. I have with us Todd Johnson and CEO of Dial Source Joshua Tillman. Uh, and you're here for Crush Your Quota and Escape the Sales Productivity Trap. Uh, hand it over to you guys. Great, thank you, Jason. So Josh, uh, I'm excited about the content that we're gonna cover today. I think most people within the sales game would admit that the last 15 years of developments around CRM have really been focused on benefiting the management team. Not that the reps haven't gotten any benefit out of this, but when you look at the amount of work that we put on salespeople to keep everything up to date in Salesforce, et cetera, there's been way more benefit to management than there really has been increased productivity for the salesperson. We've talked a lot about this next generation of new tools really being focused on changing that. And Dial Source has built a solution that's all about driving the productivity of the salesperson and increasing their overall job satisfaction. So it's not just about being productive and making numbers and making money, but at the same time, making their job simpler, get them out of some of these menial tasks that they've been focused on in the past. You talk a little bit about where dial source can make a difference and, and let's go through some of those statistics that really show how difficult it is for a sales rep today and how little time they actually spend talking to prospects. Sure, and, and to your point, uh, I think that there's a lot of emphasis in the last uh, um, decade or so, or decade and a half, uh, around the processes and procedures that we would all like our sales and service reps to not only conduct, but also log into the CRM itself as that fact of record. So we can make sure that our sales and service reps are calling the right people and having the right conversations and really making it as pleasant as possible to uh, convey the buyer's journey and help them make informed decisions. But as we all know, even with the best intentions, the best reps don't always take the time to log all the right activities in all the right places of CRM. It's labor intensive. They might not understand why it's necessary for management to improve their quality of life as a result of this data. And so as a result, it either doesn't get done more often than not, or it gets done inaccurately, right? And that in and of itself takes a large percentage of the rep's day, and that's broken into um, several major components. Uh, and so we found in the decade that we've been working on this uh, that even with the best intentions that reps have this self-intelligence on who they're going to call, when they're going to call them, and what they need to speak about. But if that's not logged into the CRM itself, then management can't make the informed and intelligent decisions on how to best facilitate the goals of their buyers. Yeah. Uh, and it also takes a lot of their time. And so as we can see here from some of our friends in the space, uh, that reps are spending uh, less than a third of their time in actually um, having the right conversations, selling the right product and servicing their, uh, their accounts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's pretty obvious that that's one of the biggest problems that we need to address, right? We need to get reps out of some of those menial tasks. We need to get them to the point where they're spending more time talking to prospects and you know for their total productivity right now only 32 percent of that time being interacting directly with a prospect is really really poor it is and it's not only that it's poor but it's it's measurable uh into what are, what would we like them to be doing with all that extra time and as a result how do we make more informed and actionable decisions as an executive team and as a management team so that we can make it easier for our reps to conduct more activity in less time with a measurable and meaningful output that's all seamlessly tracked within CRM. Yeah, and I, you know, it's interesting, this data, you know, when you look at how all the, the dollars add up, you know, when you're looking at an organization with a thousand people, you know, that's $50 million worth of productivity that gets left on the floor or $5 million in salary costs of people that are basically spending time, you know, entering information twice in two different systems or spending time, you know, doing things other than talking to prospects. Um, it's, it's interesting that you, you measure those statistics because uh, our executive team just came from a tour on the Eastern seaboard over the last 10 days 
where we were doing a slightly larger than 1,000 user implementation of dial source for a fortune sub 300. Uh, and we were able to sit down and identify the labor intensive activities that the sales and service reps are conducting to determine these activities and just shockingly how much of the day they're spending doing this. But not only that, but that intelligence that the four, five, six year veteran has that's not being logged into CRM, right. that's not being scaled to help further address cost savings within the actions and the intelligence within the CRM itself. And as, as we can see here, looking at a, a, a quote from our good friends just down the street, that 92% of customer interactions occur on the phone. And I think this really comes down to the intimacy of providing that customer journey and really facilitating how do we interact with those people that interact with us and help them provide not only the product, but a high quality of service. And that becomes more important in the venue where you hear somebody's voice right. and establish that relationship. And I think all these other touch points that help facilitate and move along that journey. Yeah, you know, what's really interesting is, is that we've developed an amazing number of tools around the overall marketing ecosystem. And yet still 92% of customer interactions still happen on the phone. So I think sometimes management teams get lost on this and aren't always thinking about the importance of the productivity of those inside reps that are spending their time, you know, pounding on the phone. You know, one of the points that you just made, Josh, that I think is really, really critical um, and, and I think should perk the ears up of sales management on the phone today, your best reps always find a way. They have a level of intuition and experience that's kind of far above average. What we're really trying to do is we're trying to drive the productivity of your average rep. If you could take the middle third and the bottom third of your organization and you could increase their productivity by 50%, that's where the real productivity gains are. Your great reps, they're always going to be your great reps. That's not who you build tools for. You build tools for the bottom third and the middle third. And that's really what we're going to talk about today. So when we start going through the step-by-step -step process on how we drive that incremental productivity, that's what we want you thinking about is what's the difference that that's going to make for that middle third and the bottom third. That's another, it's another interesting point because what we found in, in many, many deployments is that while we increase the output through the adoption of the technology, this builds trust within the, uh, the reps. And when they see that they can do more work and increase output in less time and less effort, we see what is a higher adoption rate within organizations because it is a tool used to increase the reps output, not just make them conduct more activities at the end of the interactions here. Yeah. And as, as we can see, if we spend the time having the reps conduct the right conversations that we can also increase not only the customer satisfaction scores by answering the right questions at the right time, providing the right information at the right time, but we can also increase the success of our sales teams in booking demos, selling products, and providing that quality experience. You know, we're going to probably talk about this as we get going in the process, but you know, when you break down what people spend time doing in this process, um, you know, there are some real distinct areas where we can increase productivity really quickly. Um, you know, to know that a, the average rep spends just 15 percent of their time just leaving voicemails. You know, there's some pretty low hanging fruit here uh, for our for our automation. So let, let's get into that. Um, this is the key, right, Josh, is it's not just, you know, better process, but it's about driving automation that can really make a difference for the sales team. It is, and it's not just automation, it's the right automation at the right inflection point of the conversation. And so it really comes down to the, again, the intimacy of these KPIs that are not just specific from one business to another business, but is also specific into the profiles and the roles and the products that are being sold and the products that are being serviced, where that automation helps us define what I believe is the proper definition of AI, 
not artificial intelligence, but actionable intelligence. And this actionable intelligence is defined at each of these individual levels and continually refined by looking at the data and asking net new questions. Yeah, I think that's you know one of the things that we need to make sure we convey today, Josh, is the fact that as you move through this circle, that what we are doing is building a continuous process improvement, right? We're gathering data at every stage, and then we're reusing that data to drive predictive analytics. But let's go through it one step at a time, and let's show where the automation can really make a difference and how we use the data that we gathered along the way to make better recommendations to reps in terms of call when, et cetera. So let's go on to pre-call automation. Sure, and, and, and I have over here a uh, demo org set up so we can walk through um, some of this information here uh, and show what some of this pre-call automation looks like. Now, uh, if we're gonna focus up on just some basic examples of this pre-call automation, it could come down to some of the data points that you can see down here in the Denali details section with inside of Salesforce. And while these are basic examples, it's things like how many times do I have to place a call to a leader contact before we have a conversation? Once we do have a conversation, how long am I speaking with that lead or contact? What product or service are we speaking about? And what level of interest does that individual have in the product? But we all know that the reps are not going to log that type of information at the end of every call accurately. And so as we can see here in a pre-call automation, that dial source is pumping in custom call data as it relates to this lead record and that dial source is also logging as examples activities within the record in Salesforce and because these are native fields in Salesforce they're all reportable and we can start building reports on how long do we have a conversation with a contact before it advances the stage of an open revenue opportunity right. and by feeding this into the reports inside of Salesforce we can then feed the rep the right object in Salesforce at the right time to place the call. For example, as highest percentage of day that these individuals are answering, answering conversations. Right. And that, that obviously varies by uh, time zone. It may even vary by industry, right? We know tech industry trying to reach an engineering organization between before 9 a.m., probably a bad idea. But, you know, talking to somebody in a media company that goes live on the air at 6 a.m., maybe early 5 a.m. is a good time to call. So those things make a difference. You know, Josh, one of the things that seems so impressive about this pre-call automation is the ability to draft off of things inside of Salesforce or other tools that you're using with Salesforce, like campaigns, or to be able to generate your own call queue to be able to click through based on your own filtering. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and while the, the data points that are being logged here uh, in the calling analytics can be not only used to create reports in Salesforce, but can be used to sequence other applications to take action in real time. So for example, if a, a call count was updated at the end of the conversation to a threshold of 15 times, then perhaps that sequence is a Marketo email template to be sent. Uh, perhaps if the disposition advances the stage of the open opportunity to close one, that it sends a welcome onboarding email to that contact and creates an event or a task for somebody in our organization within the implementation department. And so so this is going to not only um, log the right activities in CRM, but it's also going to create and log the right actions and activities with other systems and other stakeholders within the organization. Yeah, so I, you know, I think, so now we've talked about how you can generate that list, right? Helping the rep understand who to call, when to call, and their ability to integrate with campaign tools, their ability to generate their own calling queue, and all of that being direct inside of that Salesforce environment, I think it's really key because they're not moving information back and forth between dial source 
and their SFDC instance. That's not their organization. They're not having to do that. That is a really, really key point. Now let's talk about uh, the dialer itself. I, I, I'm sure a lot of people on the phone know about the power of a dialer, but let, let's go into a little bit of capability there. And let's also talk a little bit about why we're unique from an architecture standpoint. Why is dial source unique versus our competitors that deliver telephony by integrating with a third party Twilio? Sure. Well, it all starts up with the fact that a decade ago, a handful of us were professional nerds and started tackling difficult problems. And, and through this process, we wound up designing our own communication network. We designed all our own hardware, our own telephony infrastructure, and built it natively within CRM itself for both Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics. And so this allows us to control end-to-end -end the quality of the carriers, understand how our clients are utilizing the technology, and wrap around custom solutions to custom problems instead of integrating system on top of system. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's... Interesting, if you look at our pipeline today, Josh, I would say about 30% of our pipeline are people that are using existing solutions like InsightSales.com and are looking to make a, a transition. And the number one thing that we hear is call quality. And you know that's an area where you know we get the highest marks from our customers. And people are so satisfied with the solution that we're able to deliver. So those InsightSales.com customers, issue number one tends to be call quality. Issue number two is just overall capability or performance of the application, reliability of the application, because they are moving data back and forth between their application and Salesforce and between their application and Twilio. So Maybe you could talk a little bit about or show how you'd actually use click to dial in this scenario using dial source. Yeah, absolutely here. And so um, as we are both back into this, this org in um, Salesforce, um, I have a report here that management has assigned to me. And it could be leads with a task due today to follow up. And based on the pre-call automation here, I can be intelligently fed the right record at the right time to place the outbound call here too. And as a result of that, uh, I'm going to then have the information for the record that I need to place the call. I place the call here uh, via that record. And now that I'm on the active conversation, we can see I have some call controllers all inside of Salesforce. And I have these dispositions, which are going to allow me to uh, disconnect the call and sequence the automation at the end of the call. So for example, I can say somebody's interested, a tool tip that's configured pops up and I can take some notes and I can say DS um, webinar and go ahead and click save. Dial source is then gonna run the automation, log the activity, update the calling analytics, perhaps send an email, log those activities and bring me the next record out of that Salesforce report. And so this will empower the reps to uh, make the right decisions on who to call, when to call, for example, on when was the last time the call was placed and what was the outcome of the call and the yeah. duration and the threshold count. So we can really drive down and say, when do we have the greatest results that maximize the yeah. quality and the journey of those that are looking to engage with our organization here. Yeah. And so, what we can also say is that this is also customizable to our organization so that the rep is presented the right outcome at the right time of the conversation, customized to what I need to accomplish throughout my day. Yeah. So that the fact that you're able to just click to dial, you've got this absolutely perfect audio, the fact that we're able to, that we record all of this in stereo, so that when we're integrating with tools like Gong or Exec Vision, where people are looking to do analytics or sentiment analysis uh, on the calls that their reps are having with prospects, um, the fact that you have that great audio clarity is a really important thing, not just in terms of the engagement with the prospect, but as you start to adopt more advanced tools, um, that those tools really work better because it's really clear, you know, the different channels of audio between the prospect uh, and your salesperson. So the other thing I think that's key of what you just showed, Josh, is the way that you were able to generate that those notes and that those notes are immediately um, appended to that 
item within Salesforce, right? And that we didn't have to move data back and forth between the two applications. So the other thing that you got into is the next step in this process, which is <clears throat> post-call automation. So I think this is one of the most powerful capabilities within dial source is your ability as you're ready to terminate a call to select those pre-configured uh, next steps. Um, we know as we talk to our existing customers that one of the problems that they were trying to solve by implementing dial source was to get to the point where they had 100% compliance with the closure after every call. So essentially setting the next steps. We see that when people implement dial source, right? You can't terminate a call without selecting a uh, next step, without selecting a disposition. So maybe you could talk a little bit about what different type of dispositions there are there. I think you obviously are gonna to wanna to touch on the ability to use a voicemail automation, but it's, it's certainly a really, really important part of closing the loop. Um, for a salesperson using dial source. Absolutely, and in this example, we can just click to call a number uh, to show these dispositions. And so I've just selected a lead record here, clicked it, and as we uh, notice here, these blue dispositions have populated on the connected call. And for those that, that see the difference here, I actually have nearly twice as many dispositions in a click to call example as I did in the previous report, because I'm being presented the right call outcome for the right dial I'm making here. And these dispositions can not only be customized in name, but associated automation that will log activities and sequence the other applications, like the Marketos in the previous example here. Right. And so this will save me significant time and energy while logging all the right actions and activities. So if this person is interested as a result, I have to type in my notes and I can say a DS demo here. And as I click save, it'll disconnect the call. It'll run the automation, it'll log my notes, log a task, and create a follow-up activity here for me. And we'll do it all in real time to that point. So as I just refresh the record, we can see that Dial Source and Salesforce updated the status to working and the rating to hot and pumped in the telephony metadata. The call happened here just now, and it was interested call outcome for the first call count that lasted 45 seconds, the notes that were logged, and an open task for me. And so, as we mentioned here, dial source can be closing activities, opening new activities, and always presenting the right call outcomes here. So we're allowing the rep to decide how they want to work that's most conducive for them, but still enable them through the post-call automation to save them the significant time and energy while also logging all these actions and activities so management has this 100% compliant report in Salesforce of the data they need to make more actionable and intelligent decisions yeah. quickly. Yeah, you know, two, two of the things that you brought up that I think are really key. One is that the disposition list can vary depending on who you've called. So that things can be configured so that in a given campaign, the follow-up can be exactly right for the people that you're calling against that distribution list. The second thing is, this is essentially, they're scripts. Not only do they are they automated when you click on them, but they can launch other processes. Like you said, it could launch, you could put somebody into a warming campaign where the next step is for Marketo to send them an email, or you could put them in a follow-up campaign uh, follow-up mode where the next step is Marketo sending them a diagram of what an implementation process might look like. So that is really, really powerful. And I, I think that this is one of the things when people only focus on a dialer, I think this is one of the things that people really miss. So much of this productivity comes from the use of these automated distributions positions and the ability to drive all these downstream actions. It's really, really powerful. I, I agree. And it, it, even just to flip that to the opposite of the inbound side of things, uh, while we're focusing all this all, uh, automation analytics, it's equally as important if we're realizing who we're calling, when we're calling, and how long we're talking to them, that when they call us, that we're still capturing that same type of data. Right. And so to flip the script here, um, we have the ability when a client calls in to recognize that caller ID, 
use this pre-call automation to route that call to the right rep on our side who owns that record, has the right skills, and is available to take that inbound phone call here. And so that really, to the point you make, completes this kind of technology stack where it's more of a communication platform native for Salesforce than just simply a dialer itself. And right. even to that degree, uh, if I were to call into the sales line tied into this org while I was working on this lead record, um, we would see all of that occur um, inside of here where Dow Source is now called, I mean called here, and if I go ahead and answer the record here, uh, it's going to pop this record on my screen instantaneously. So right. my cell phone number has been record recognized by Dial Source. Dial Source appended this to the open record here, and we can see how many times this call has been made to this contact, the yeah. inbound records, the outbound records, and all the activity history here. And now that I'm interacting with contacts and yeah. open revenue opportunities, I can have different dispositions that are affecting opportunity stages, right. account statuses, et cetera here. Yeah. So we're further not only facilitating increasing the productivity of our sales and service teams, but simplifying the journey to which those are our leads, our contacts, and our revenue generating accounts. Yeah, I mean, the fact that the prospect that's dialing in or the support call that's dialing in the fact that they don't have to repeat all of the past interactions that you've already had with them the fact that the person receiving the call has all of that immediately available is so powerful the other thing is it sets such a positive tone with the person that you're speaking with that you're well educated that you already know what interactions have taken place in the past, you probably know what they're calling about. So it, 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 this doesn't just benefit the salesperson or the support person, it ultimately delivers great benefit to the prospect or to the person seeking help. Well, to your point, I think that's really where this entire technology stack needs to start is focusing on the quality of the journey of those we are interacting with. Yes. And if we can use those data points to provide a seamless and quick quality of experience, then technology such as dial source can make sure that our reps have the right information to know who you are, why you're calling us, and what problem we can solve for you. And as a result, we will sell more, and we will service more, and we will be able to ask more intelligent questions from the processes and the procedures all stored and managed within our CRM. Yeah, I think that's that's really key. You know, the fact that we have all of this information available to us at our fingertips at the time that we make a call or at the time that we receive a call, it lets us focus our energy on asking the right questions of the prospect or to focus our time on researching the solution to someone's problem. I mean, that, is, that is such an important point. You know, Josh, we, we saw that slide earlier in our deck today that talked about how salespeople spend 15% of their time just leaving voicemails. Um, that's one thing. Can you? I, I want you just to speak to that since it's it's a discrete capability, but it it uses 15% of salespeople's time. How do I use automated dispositions within Dial Source um, to get all of that time back? Sure, and I actually have a uh, some dashboards here from our friends at Stanford that have helped us help them make more actionable and intelligent decisions. And in quantifying this, we've been able to facilitate the reps increasing their output in less time, but also quantifying it to know what percentage of the reps time is spent making calls on the phone, conversing, receiving phone calls. And as we can see here breaking down, what percentage of their day was on an active conversation with the right lead and the right contact here. Uh, we can not only see that, but we can dive down and see what percentage of their day was in an active conversation so we can help them spend more of their day, in this case nearly 50% of their day, on conversations over a certain threshold, maybe a minute in length, to the right revenue opportunities here. Right. And then we can even tie these analytics further into uh, how many dollars is each rep net new generating per day, and how many conversations are they having advancing existing opportunities right. by pumping the telephony metadata of the call back into the revenue opportunity in Salesforce and relating it back into the account in Salesforce on a custom basis, yeah. ever-changing basis. Yeah, as you said, this works the same essentially within Dynamics as it does 
uh, uh, within Salesforce. It, it does, and in a one-to-one -one capability here. Uh, we're native top to bottom in both uh, Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics here. So why don't you talk just briefly about dispositions and voicemail? So as we saw, in, 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 we can customize those dispositions in literally just a couple clicks. And so it's very common for us to uh, be able to install dial source in, in, in dozens of minutes uh, and have reps utilizing the technology within hours. Uh, and the disposition configuration is pumping in the custom data into Salesforce, helping reps manage in real time. Yeah, that's great. I mean, the ability to just on a given campaign to click a, distri uh, a disposition that says, you know, voicemail about upcoming webinar uh, is really powerful. So I just click that automated disposition. I'm off to my next call that was determined based on the campaign that I'm working. And in the background, dial source is waiting for the, the you know, it's heard the pickup. It's waiting for the queue, and then it actually leaves my voicemail that I've pre-recorded uh, in regards to the specific campaign that I'm working on. So as I said, it's a direct recapture of that 15% of my time that I've been spending, you know, waiting for the beep and leaving the voicemail. Sure. And we also make sure, based on the campaign we're working against, that we're always leaving the right voicemail, that there's no confusion. Right, we, we find that it only takes a lot of time, but later throughout the day, reps just are tired. Uh, and the rep might not be leaving the same bang up voicemail at 3.30 right. in the afternoon after yeah. a big late lunch at eight in the morning. And so we've seen our accounts um, have their reps pre-record four or five voicemail templates for that day's activities and as a result, leave the right message at the right time accurately. Right, so Josh, you know, one of the things that the next step here is kind of the culmination of everything that we've done till now, right? We used a set of analytics to generate who we're gonna call or we're working off of a campaign. The second thing we did is we showed the power of the dialer and how much productivity we can gain doing that, and how the fact that the solution is native to either uh, Salesforce or to Dynamics, the fact that all the notes and everything that we execute is immediately appended to that record, shown the automated disposition, all the different power that can come of that, the scripts that can run, generating those next steps. But, you know, maybe the the real golden egg here is taking all of the data that we've generated along this journey and being able to use that to refine the next time around this process. So being able to take that log data and being able to take that that information that we've drawn back out of the telephony system uh, to drive those next set of decisions. Can you talk a little bit about how we do that and how the data is used? Yeah, we wind up basically, uh, after installing the technology, having our implementations and CSM teams sit down with the stakeholders of the organization to really understand what are the KPIs that facilitate making your job easier and making it easier to increase the adoption of technology for those reps. And as we sit down and intimately understand that, we work as a strategic partner to help build this data, help build this automation, help build this analytics, and facilitate more productivity from the already heavy utilized CRM system. And we really want to facilitate increase in adoption by the reps and empowering management to make faster and more accurate decisions. Yeah, so an example, let me, let's, let's be specific. So Josh, one of the examples would be in our business, one of the most important milestones along a sales process is actually being able to give a prospect a demo. In a lot of other businesses, that's not a milestone. So when we look at the KPIs that we're focused on, time to demo or the path that we've taken that leads someone to sign up for a demo, the KPIs associated with that are super important. And so when you talk about those custom APIs, that's what we're, I mean, KPIs, excuse me, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about gathering the information that gives us the best indication that someone is going to want to book a demo and that we're dialing at the right time, that we're dialing the right titles, that we're using the right scripts. So 
maybe you could give some other examples of how some of our prospects or some of our customers are using these custom KPIs to drive that increased productivity, so to generate that next set of call lists. Sure, and there's always low-hanging fruit that we want to then build upon, but it could be saying like, what hour of the day is resulting in the most amount of conversations with the highest amount of talk time resulting in the most productive call outcomes? And each of those data points could be individual fields in the CRM that allow us to report on it and then filter through how we want to target those individuals. And to our own business model, we'll not only want to book those demos, but then see who attended and how fast we can service their requirements and implementation, but also see who those that did not attend the demo and make sure they're on the right buying path and journey, and that we're also working with those through all the other channels that uh, are accurately being pursued here. Right, right, very good. <clears throat> so why don't we sum up here then, and then let's take some questions. You know, I, I obviously the automation of this process is really important and you know i think for the people on the phone I, I think thinking about this not just as a tool for your best people but to think about it as a tool for your middle group of people and your lower performing reps that's where we see the huge increase in productivity not that your best reps won't see it as well they will and they'll appreciate it but really lifting the productivity of that bottom 66% is really the most important part of this process. So let's take a look at some of the questions that we have. Josh, one of the questions um, is what, we have 30 inside salespeople. How, what is a typical implementation time for dial source and what are the key things that take place during an implementation? Sure. Uh, the, the short answer is it's rather rapid because we want to demonstrate wins out of the gate. And so, as mentioned, it could be uh, minutes to install uh, and it could be a couple hours of uh, identifying what are the important KPIs for the stakeholders uh, and building those those data points with inside of Salesforce. That literally takes uh, a welcome meeting uh, and some custom implementation. And we like to get our our, our uh, pilots up and going and our contracts up and going um, in hours to days as opposed to weeks and months right the fact that it is a cloud service really makes a difference and the fact that we're not importing and exporting data out of either dynamics and Salesforce is another one of those things that drives a rapid implementation I think the other thing is is that as people get more experience with dial source they may add more and more automated dispositions but it's relatively straightforward to get started in the beginning. So it's amazing to see cases like one of the large projects that you've been working on uh, this last week on the East Coast where you're implementing hundreds of new salespeople getting them up and running and productive in less than a week. Yeah, and very, that, very impressive. In that particular example, we did a, a tour with the account and we, in 10 business days, launched 700 users into production. Uh, and in the next few weeks, we'll be launching another 900 users in production. Uh, and in those cases, we want to work hand in hand uh, to make sure that there's high adoption in a short period of time. Right, right. So one of the other questions we have is that people's current uh, lead generation process is really good at generating names and addresses and maybe even titles. What do you suggest as one of the ways that people can go up, up, append those records with actual phone numbers? Sure, and it's a great question. It's a data-driven question back into CRM itself, and so we want to have accurate data to first place and receive those phone calls. Uh, but whether it's our internal organization where we're using tools like Zoom Info and Discover Org or EverString, where we are um, looking to self-enrich the information from those individuals that came to our booth at a conference we might not have had a phone number for, or those web to leads that often come into our website or read a piece of our collateral that we want to self-enrich, and as as a result of getting the data into Salesforce. Force, it's as easy as the rep clicking to call it or queuing it up in a campaign to then be able to nurture and communicate with that particular contact. Yeah, that, that's great. And, and those tools like Zoom Info, you know, are tools that you're connecting directly into Dynamics or into Salesforce to, to enrich those uh, records. So uh, hopefully that answers their question. Um, next question is, do you offer a free trial? So let's talk about where a trial or a pilot 
fits within our process. You know, obviously, we want to get people using the product as quickly as possible, but talk a little bit about how that typically works. Yeah, sure. I mean, we want to have a, an accurate test drive so that somebody understands what's the experience behind the wheel, and it's not just a clever marketing campaign. Uh, and so we, there's that fine line where we want to be able to understand uh, what are those custom KPIs where we can demonstrate value quickly and yeah. effectively. So getting in, making some click to calls, uh, having some dispositions configured, having calls placed in log so we can really see that we're increasing not only the amount of dials, but the amount of conversations and the actionable intelligence derived from them. And we can clearly measure that our organization will be moving in the right direction by having not only the tool that pr is provided by dial source but the industry experience that's allowed us to do so well over the last decade both in the Salesforce ecosystem and for Microsoft yeah you know I think one of the most important things that we always try and do before we start a pilot and it sounds simple but I'll tell you in many conversations it's not that is making sure that we know what problem we're trying to solve so I think as people are interested in doing trials, having a really good sense of, you know, what are the key things you're trying to improve? It's usually not as simple as just how many calls people are making in a day. Well, to, um, that, to that point, I probably should have said this earlier in the meeting, but I don't believe that dials equal dollars, which might sound odd coming from dial source, but I believe that conversations create relationships and relationships create revenue opportunity. Right. And so by driving down on the relationship, we can thus better create and serve the revenue opportunities that help all of our organizations grow. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is, you know, a really important thing that this is not just a quantity game. This is a quality game. Uh, and by increasing dials, that's a good thing. It's a step in the sure. right direction, but it's really not. The, the basis for long-term success. The basis for long-term success is doing a better job with prospects on the phone and getting more prospects on the phone. So it's really those quality and quantity metrics that really make the difference. So what, one question, you know, what are some of the early productivity gains that you see? You know, we get a lot of statistics from our existing customers, but why don't you talk a little bit about you know, what's some of the real world examples uh, of productivity gains and, and, and how long does it take for people to start reaping the benefits of a system like this? Common low hanging fruit goals are accurately measuring how many dials and conversations are occurring on a daily, weekly average. And as a result, how long are conversations lasting before a revenue opportunity is created and or advanced, won or lost? It's just as important of why we're losing business as we are winning business. Right. And so being able to have all that data being logged at the end of every call for every rep and a single click of a button allows us to start measuring that output within the first clicks of the reps touching dial source. By the end of the first day, by the end of the first week, there is a mountain of data that can be used to create those reports in Salesforce and measure how much more are our reps doing and what do they have to say to us as a result of it, which is more often than not, we're being able to do more work in less time. Yeah, it's, it really is amazing to see that, you know, at the end of that first week, how, you know, reps can tell you they've felt their productivity increase. It's just not a matter of generating the statistics, but the reps are happier uh, that we've taken so many of those menial tasks away from them and that we're focusing them on having better conversations. Well, thank you, Josh. You know, I think We've covered a lot today. A um, couple of the things that I want to make sure that we summarize are, this is not a dialer business. This is not an analytics business. This is really about building a holistic solution that helps the process at each step. So it's that pre-call automation where we're able to focus on the right prospects. It's using a dialer to automate some parts of the process that can really make a difference in overall productivity. It's making sure that we get to 100% on our next step setups by using these automated dispositions and you know, launching the rest of our marketing ecosystem against these prospects if that's what you know, the next step really uh, contains. And then being able to use the culmination of everything we've learned through the first three steps of the process to make us better the next time around. It, it's that that makes dial source really unique. And, uh, you know, talk a little bit about how we're rated within the um, app exchange. I think the results speak 
you know, loudly how successful we're being. Uh, sure, we launched on the Salesforce App Exchange at Dreamforce 2009, and since Dow Source has been the number one rated communication system for Salesforce, we're the number two rated communication system for Salesforce, and uh, I believe we're the sixth ranked application in all categories for Salesforce on the App Exchange. It really comes down to the fact that it is a custom built solution in designing the hardware and software together to wrap that solution around our customers' problems quickly and easily. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, we appreciate all of you joining us. Um, you know, one of the things that we're going to continue to talk about on, you know, the next set of uh, webinars that will be uh, uh, rolling out in coming months is this focus on rep productivity. It is what really sets Dialsource apart. Um, yes, management gets great benefit out of all of this, but one of the most important things that we're focused on is driving the success and the happiness uh, of the people within your inside sales organization, uh, reduce churn, and generate much higher outputs. So thank you, and uh, we look forward to speaking to you again next time. Thank you, everybody, for your time today.